Today, I'm gonna to show you a deeper dive into the firmware settings so that you can customize your settings to maximize the precision of your CNC. We're gonna have a little bit of refresher on where we came from, and then I'm gonna show you how you need to check your values and tweak them so that the theoretical value becomes the actual value and allow you to also increase your CNC speed. So let's start right here with the initial travel uh, firmware settings that we previously set up in another video. I tweaked dollar sign 100, 101, and 102 to be 320 steps per millimeter. Our goal today is to verify that when we run these settings that they are indeed moving the distance that we expect and then also if they are different how to dial those settings in further it is an issue of what we theoretically think we're going to move compared to what we're going to actually move. And it's something you definitely want to address when you're building your own CNC, or even if you bought a manufactured one, you very well may can be able to increase how accurate your CNC is. So with that being said, let's back up just a hair and let's revisit where we started with. We began with a stepper motor, a NEMA 23 and the NEMA 23 that I have has 200 steps per revolution of the shaft. So if you twist it 360 degrees, it's done it in little increments and you can feel the catchiness when you twist. If you take 360 divided by 200, you'll find that each little click on the shaft is 1.8 degrees. But ultimately, we could care less about what the angular twist is per step. What we really care about is when we hook it up to a ball screw, how far the ball screw is gonna move. And it would sure be nice if there was a way that we could make the resolution of these steps to go from 1.8 degrees to smaller. And the answer is found inside the stepper motor drivers. Inside the stepper motor drivers, you are not forced to use 1.8 degrees. The stepper motors have clever electronics that will energize coils in such a way that you can do what we call half steps, quarter steps, eight steps, 16 steps, et cetera, et cetera. And that allows us to go to a much, much higher degree in order to shift the shaft. And if you can reduce down the angle of the rotations, then you can increase your precision. We've already sort of done that, but let me just go a little bit deeper again, and I think you're gonna start seeing some pieces come together that maybe you didn't fully appreciate before. Here's a chart of pulses per revolution. This is coming off the stepper motor driver. Let's say we tell our stepper motor driver by setting the switches on the side to do 200 pulses per revolution. Since our NEMA 23 has 200 uh, steps per revolution. If we tell our stepper motor driver to do 200, it's doing full steps. That means that it's going to do one complete rotation of our shaft of our NEMA 23. Then the next thing that comes into play is the ball screw or lead screw that we have. Pitch and lead for single threaded screws are the same. You can usually find these on your manufacturer's data sheet or you could physically measure it by twisting your, your ball screw and seeing how much the ball nut housing moves along the way. This particular one that I have has a leader pitch of five. That means that if I do one complete rotation, that housing moves five millimeters linearly along the threads. If you do a little math, if we take the pulses per revolution that's coming off our stepper motor driver, and divide by the leader pitch that we have, we would find that it, 40 pulses will move this particular housing of this ball screw one millimeter. That means that if we do a little bit more math, which if we take 40 and divide it into one millimeter, so one millimeter divided by 40, we get 0 0.025. That is the absolute smallest amount that Arduino, if we set it up with that setting inside our stepper motor driver could possibly get for our carves. You would be seeing jagged uh, markings because this is like two one hundredths of a millimeter and you would be able to pick that up with your eye definitely when you're doing any kind of circular design. So let's go down to the next setting. 
let's make it so that our stepper motor driver sends 400 pulses per revolution. In other words, it is tricking our stepper motor into doing what we call half steps. Two times 200 is 400. This is half steps. The pitch of our lead screw is still five. That means it's going to take 80 pulses to move a millimeter. One divided by 80, that means the best resolution we could possibly have is just a, a little bigger than a hundredth of a millimeter, 0 0.0125 millimeters. That's not bad, but you would probably still be able to definitely pick that up with your eye. Let's go down another step. Uh, let's go down to one quarter step. So four times 200 is gonna give you 800. That's quarter steps. If you take 800 pulses per revolution divided by a distance of five, then that means that 160 pulses are required in order to move that shaft on that ball nut housing one millimeter. And if I take one divided by 160, I would get a resolution of 0 0.0063 millimeters, 63 one thousandths of a millimeter. That's really good. That would be a legitimate setting for your CNC. And some of you might want to go adjust your switch settings back to this. But I went a step further when I initially recommended and I went extremely conservative. I went down to one eight stepping and that means uh, eight times 200 is 1600. If you take 1600 divided by five, you're gonna see it takes 320 steps to move one millimeter. And that means that if I take one divided by 320, I get 0 0.00315 millimeters, uh, or yeah, millimeters per single pulse. That is the lowest resolution I could possibly get. That's what we have set right here. And that is exactly what we used when we had these settings right here. That's where the, the numbers came from. But here's what a lot of people don't really think about. That lead of five, even though the manufacturer says it's five, there's always, this is physically made. So there's always a little bit of tolerance issues and that may not be perfectly ground on your particular ball screw. It doesn't sound like much to have it say the, the lead is five point, you know, zero, 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 two. But if you start doing, you know, hundreds and hundreds of revolutions across a long distance of a ball screw, by the time you get to the end, it's fairly significant. In fact, it's significant enough that sometimes it warrants actually changing your stepper uh, driver uh, firmware. So, or I should say your firmware inside your Arduino. Let me illustrate. So here's how you check to see whether or not the settings that you have are actually moving the distance you think they should move on your CNC. And this is dialing it in. So step one, you're gonna get a sharp bit inside your CNC. You can mount a pencil, you could do whatever you want. We wanna verify that that distance of moving one millimeter is as accurate as possible over the widest possible movement of our CNC bed. And if it needs adjusted, we can adjust it. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to physically measure by putting a mark on the left side with a bit that is centered on our CNC. And then we're going to move to the far side of that same axis and put a mark and then measure it. And we'll measure the actual distance between the marks and compare that to the software distance. Your software then on your screen should have some value. I just chose a thousand for simplicity here, but whatever your screen has, that'll be your software value. Then you need to take a ruler or something and measure from the center of the dot to the center of the dot and see if those two values match. If they match, you're good to go. And, but let's say when you actually matched it, when you went over that long distance, Suddenly your CNC only moved 995 millimeters, but your software said it should have moved a thousand. That means that we were short steps on our software. How do we fix the 320 so that we move the right distance? The answer is we're gonna set up a ratio. We're gonna take whatever that particular axis is. This is for the X. So I use dollar sign 100 and I'm going to take the value that we were using when we did this little shift, 320, and I'm gonna multiply by the ratio of whatever the software 
said we moved compared to what we physically measured we moved. You're going to get an answer. You're going to put it into that, type it into your dollar sign 100. You're going to press enter and make sure you hit apply new settings. And then you have updated this and then you're going to recheck it and make sure that that is working the way you expect. You're going to repeat that process for each of your three axes. And when you get done with your three axes, uh, if you want to, and you've verified that they're moving the right distance, you can increase the speed that these axes go and the acceleration. Whenever you make those changes, it is important to come back here and make sure that it's still moving the right number of steps. If you get to, to try to move too fast, you can miss steps, in which case you need to lower down your acceleration on your CNC. Just because you have a maximum speed in your firmware doesn't mean that you will actually ever be cutting things with that maximum speed necessarily. I hope that helps and good luck at configuring your software. Just so you can see the process of getting to those firmware settings, I plugged in my Arduino, I've hooked it into my Raspberry Pi, I'm going to connect to my machine. Because I have limit switches, it will have an alarm code that comes up. I have to unlock my machine. I'm going to go over here to the far right hand side. I'm going to click on firmware. Then we simply drag down to get to the settings that we are concerned with. In this case, we're looking at the X, Y, and Z travel resolution.